Well, hey there and hey 2021. You know what I love about New Year's is that it offers a fresh start and there's nothing more fresh than getting your hands in the dirt. Well, hey you guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. I'm a backyard farmer in San Diego, California, but we've got a big dream. We wanna own and operate a regenerative farm and retreat center. But for now, we steward that dream by farming our backyard and our worm farm and our mobile greenhouse and all of our pollinator gardens, which we've established over the last two years of living here and learning how to max out our space to grow as much food as possible. But most of you guys know that already. This is our modern homestead and I'm so glad you're here. So today we're going to go on a garden tour and we're going to get to do some gardening together and I can't wait to hop into that with you. Few quick announcements. First one, hey, hi, hello. So glad to be with you again. I took a week off YouTube and I really missed you guys. So please do let me know how are you doing in this new year in the comments down below. Which brings me to announcement number two, which is I love this community so much. You guys all mean so much to me and I am so grateful for you guys. I love that this community is about positivity and lifting one another up, believing in the big dreams, making the most of it where you are and celebrating homegrown and homemade goodness. If you are into those things, which I think you are if you're here. I wanna invite you guys to join my newsletter. I'm doing a 10K giveaway when we hit 10K here on YouTube. If you're a part of the newsletter, you are entered automatically to win some goodies that will help you live your good life wherever you may be. All right, that's it, enough talking. Let's go on a garden tour and get our hands in the dirt. Welcome to the Homegrown Playlist, where this year it's my goal to share with you everything that we're growing here in our backyard farm and front yard gardens using regenerative agriculture principles. As so many of you already know, this lemon tree is a testament to the power of regeneration and what can be done even on a small scale using worms. Just a few applications of worm tea earlier this year and some worm castings at the base of this tree, this tree has gone from being on the verge of death to yielding total lemon abundance. And it is so exciting to harvest all of these lemons with you guys today. The front yard pollinator gardens continue to crank out beautiful lavender flowers, which don't necessarily need pruning just yet, but I decided to select a few just because they smell absolutely wonderful. After working in the front yard gardens, it was time to harvest these peppers, finally. <laughs> Here I'm harvesting Serrano, Jimmy Nardello and Craig's Grande Jalapeno Peppers, all from Baker Creek Seed Company. These are peppers that I grew myself from seed, and it is so amazing to see the process from seed to fruit. Some things I learned this year include planting peppers next to each other may lead to cross-pollination and you're not really sure if the next generation of seeds will be sweet or hot. So there's that. <laughs> I also learned that jalapenos turn red if you leave them on the vine long enough. Thank you. 
As tempting as it was to leave these peppers in their place, I ultimately decided to take them out to make room for some new transplants next week. And I'm glad that I made this decision because ultimately I found grubs in the roots and I'll show you guys how to treat these next week. But your best bet is always to remove them by hand. Once I could finally see what was actually going on in this bed, I realized it was time to transplant our oregano somewhere else and maybe even save some of these nasturtium plants for relocation elsewhere or as gifts for friends. Now I have to say, those of you who voted to leave the leaves on the garden beds, you were so right. My garden beds have never looked better. The soil is so light and fluffy and I'm so impressed with how the soil is doing this year. A lot of you guys ask how I train my nasturtium or what I do to get it to grow and this is it. At certain points in the year, it sends out these runners and I just try to train them as best as I can where I want them to go. This year, I'm really hoping for that enchanted garden look again. So I'll be training them along the sides of the garden beds as well as up and over the trellis. Now, nasturtiums don't have tendrils. So if you want them to be in a certain place, you just need to weave them in and out of some kind of trellis like this. Moving on to bed number two, there was some weeding to be done and some transplanting to be done. And I found a new little friend that I've never met before. And he is actually Satan's spawn. He is so spiky. and I couldn't find my gloves anywhere. So I just used my clippers to clip him out and toss him far, far away. Now these little baby bok choy are bok choy that Jess planted here. And so they are precious to me. And even though I have no idea what bok choy tastes like, I decided to thin them and transplant them and create a more cohesive row. Now these lettuce plants were volunteers from last year and were very heavily seeded in one area. So again, just taking that same idea of rather than tossing them anywhere, just transplanting them elsewhere and giving them a little tender loving care to come back to life in their new spot. Here is an example of what the soil is looking like right now underneath all of these leaves. I don't find the leaves very lovely, but I do love that it mimics nature and I do love what it's doing for the soil. Moving on to bed number three, there was a lot of weeding to do. If you guys remember from the last garden tour, I think birds ate a lot of the seeds here. And so I'll have to do a lot of transplanting to get this part of the garden going again. But luckily we've got great soil to work with and I'm so excited about that. All right, now this is where I need your help. I actually don't know what's going on here. Are these weeds or are these plants of some kind? I'm pretty sure they're weeds, right? I don't know. Somebody tell me what you think I should do. I think I need to pluck them out and transplant something else there, but not totally sure. Moving on to the next bed. As you can see, we've got lots of little lettuces and spinaches popping up. I love leafy greens, so seeing all of this gets me so excited. And towards the back of the bed, we also have these green beauty peas, which I hope to train against the wall, but we'll see how that goes. And last but not least, a very lonely little purple kale. <laughs> He's so sweet and I wish I had more of him, but just one for now. 
And the fifth and final bed is what I call the Jill bed because she worked so diligently to plant all of these turnips here and they really need thinning. So I'm going to thin these and actually use the leaves and I'll show you guys how I do that in a recipe video coming up very soon. And for anybody who wants an update on our love fern, our avocado tree that we planted on our wedding day is also still doing great, living her best life in the California sunshine. And the pollinator garden back here. Yes, it needs to be pruned. It will happen eventually. <laughs> And a little update for you on these future sunflower transplants. Our Hugel culture sunflowers are doing great. Ready for transplant next week. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one.